All right, all right, we are back, peoples of the world, and uh, we are ready to get this Saturday pay for play. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, which, you know what, maybe I should start putting my Instagram on here too, not that people care that much, I don't really care that much, but if you follow me on Instagram, you can get more, obviously, personal uh, parts of my life that are going on, and uh, yesterday's story, if you kind of clicked on my Instagram story, you could see that I went to my first live concert in a long, long time. Uh, shit, I can't even remember the last time I went to a concert. Uh, maybe two years ago. <laughs> it's been a long time because in Korea, I didn't really go to concerts at all because uh, I didn't really like the music that they played in their little clubby band things there because it was, like I said, it was typically either indie rock or uh, some foreigners playing uh, punk rock or indie rock and I just, it's not my thing. So last night, uh, actually some of you should know, um, my friend Tony, he's actually uh, been on this channel, I think a couple weeks ago, he joined in for one of the live sessions for a little bit. He is actually the drummer that was on the video of my high school dream theater uh, kind of thing at the high school talent show. And he was the drummer. He at the time was the best kid drummer I had ever seen uh, and he's, I think he still has uber talent for music. Uh, he graduated with his master's in music um, and I kind of lost connection with him um, before I went to Korea, didn't really talk at all and then when I got back we kind of uh, hooked back up again and talked, had a couple beers here and there and he plays for this band called, their band name is the Moon Bats. Uh, see this is one of the things I don't like about going live is that uh, I can't put like links to show you or whatever, like live. I, I'm sure maybe there is a way to do that if I pre-think it, but I wish I could just put a link up here to his band. Uh, if you like uh, 60s, um, like the Monkees, Beatles, if that's your gig, these guys, that's their whole gig. Their whole gig is like to play covers of old 60s music and 70s music and uh, last night they played their first concert in over a year, over a year because of the pandemic. And so he asked, or he just kind of told us, and told me that they had a concert. So I went out and watched them, and that was on my Instagram story. So you get to see things like that. But they did a, you know, really good job, especially for shaking off the cobwebs of a year or so. Of, but you know, playing that music, so um, that was fun. The other bad thing about it, though, is you can see that I'm wearing fucking this because it's fucking winter again in Ohio. It's so damn, I hate, Sasha, I don't care, I'm gonna talk about it. I hate this fucking weather in Ohio. I've always hated it. So we went from like totally cold for the whole freaking month of May and then went uh, to like literally 90 degrees. We hit 90 degrees on Tuesday, 90 degrees. So it went from like winter to 90 degrees and now we're back at I saw on the TV is the second lowest high temperature in May, uh, May, what is today, 29th, in recorded history for Ohio. It's the second coldest temperature. May 29th and our high is 53 or something like that. That's fucking crazy. So I had to turn the damn heat back on. I was like, eh, I'm not going to turn the heat back on. I woke up this morning. I was like, eh, yeah, I got to turn the heat back on. <laughs> it's fucking retarded. So I got to wear a fucking, I thought I was going to be wearing a t-shirt here, but guess not. So 
Anyway, let's move on and get into this uh, pay for play. We have six songs here today by Dan. And I think Dan already told you guys in the chat that this is, uh, he's got a good set list, at least by band name. So uh, I'm looking forward to this set list, uh, of course. And Dan was very, very specific about the order. Now, remember, I've told you guys, if you're going to give me a set list of, you know, basically a whole video, which, by the way, after I said in the last video that we are, you know, open to take more requests because we kind of caught up. Uh, a slew of them came in and most of them are set lists versus like individual people picking one or two suggestions. So it's basically not just a Dan marathon, Mr. Colin. It's going to be like uh, John Feedy sent in one, which will be next week. I think um, Adrian has sent in a set list, which will be maybe Monday night. Uh, so we and we have uh, Jean-Francois has, has also sent in, which will be next week. So we're already kind of... Uh, with these set lists, we're already kind of like starting to back up again into next week. But the good thing is, is that I told you guys my last day of work was on Thursday. So yesterday I had off and I have a whole week off uh, before I start my new job on the 7th. And the 7th is a Monday. So basically I have this whole next week off, which means that we can do maybe two videos extra that we wouldn't normally be able to do because I've got the time and I'm not pretty much going anywhere. Uh, so uh, I'm excited for this. These set lists should be good, but uh, let's get into this. We're already 11 minutes in and uh, Dan, like I said, he was very specific about this. And the reason I brought that up is not only do you want to pick your set list, but if you guys want to be very specific about the order of that set list, you have to be very clear how you want that order. Now there's a caveat to this because I've started to run into some problems with some of you guys. <laughs> some of you guys like, tell me this is what you want. And then like a day before, you guys like, oh, can you change this? Oh, can you change this? And it's not a big deal. It really isn't that big of a deal. But when like two or three people at the last minute say like, can you change this? It like does, it does affect me because I have to go back. I have to redo it because I have to actually set this up in the OBS to make sure it kind of transitions well. So when you have me change it, it does take a little bit of extra time. Again, not that big a deal, but try. I'm just asking you to try try to pick ahead of time and and like think about it and not like, like make a last minute change because it does make me especially if like three or four of you do it at the same time which this week i had three people change <laughs> some songs then like it just takes some time to go back and reorganize things so just try to remember that for the future okay so here we go with dan's first song uh the first song which i said remember this is very very specific why he chose these things and he can tell you in the chat why if you guys have any questions why he did that um this first one is called lex terminus uh and the song that's the band the band is lex terminus uh which we've heard before i think once and then the song is called shit electro communion electro communion is the song name so Dan says uh, this is kind of balls to the wall, so we're going to see if it's actually balls to the wall. Here we go. Like it? Okay. <laughs> Cool. It's got like a heavy feel, but like very melodic chords. Nice. I like that. <laughs> I'm liking this so far. Got a very jazz, it's like a mix of a couple styles. Damn. That hi hat's rolling. Let's 
starting to build with extra stuff, taking away from some of the repetition. Oh, yeah. Great switch there. Nice, Dan. As if Dan's the one playing it. <laughs> I should say nice, ter Lux Terminus. Oops. Three, four. Great, another great transition. That's two for two on the transitions. Good mood here. There you go, Colin. There's your pop with energy. <laughs> Good. How it's going up. Definitely going on a playlist, Dan. Definitely. See, I don't mind this kind of jazz. This is definitely like, depending on how long it is. If this song goes on like this for another five minutes, then eh. But if it's a shorter song, love it. I agree, Jeff. They're picking great like chords that are uplifting. Yes. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of LTE very much, Gabriel. Especially this part. Like a Aurora John Petrucci song from his new album. Sounds like it's the end. Oh, that was a cool ending if that's the end. It wasn't like some dramatic, crazy thing. It just kind of... Nice. Hell yeah, Dan starts off with the bang. Nice job, Dan. That's definitely going on a uh, playlist for me. Very good chords, very uplifting. Definitely reminded me of Terminal Velocity a bit, i.e. LTE because it's all John Petrucci. Um... Yeah, that was great. I didn't feel like it was too long. Like I said, if it was too long, I think I would have gotten bored with some of that. But it was very packaged well. Um, I liked a lot of the transitions. They did a good job with that middle section that went kind of low and like relaxed and chill back into some nice happier feel as well. That was a great, great, great instrumental. So speaking of, you know, we've had this conversation a bit for the last couple of weeks about longer songs and stuff like that. So I've always said, like, if you're gonna be, you know, let's just say 10 plus minute song, uh, especially if you're gonna be a 15 minute plus song, it's just gotta be good, you know? It's gotta be, It's it, it, there's gonna be a higher standard because it's like, if you're gonna make it that long, it makes it harder to make it that good, but if you can make it that good, that's what makes it epic. And I was sitting there in my car two days ago driving and Graves came on. And as I was listening to Graves, again, for the 100th time, I was like, this is a perfect example of a 15 plus minute song that is worth it 
that is a, I mean, just that whole song is fucking epic. And if it's like that, then I think it's worthwhile to be 15 minutes long because it's that epic. But you're just, you're really, you're really like risking a lot when you try to make songs that long. And if you can't get to the Graves level or the um, uh, a change of seasons kind of level, then it just, I'd rather you not do it and I'm gonna get bored with it. So it is hard, but it is good. That song was short enough that I think it just made it really, really, really good. So nice job, Dan. Let's move on to number two. Speaking of number two, we got some Graves, some more Caligula's Horse. Hell yeah, dude, I cannot wait because he picked these songs that I'm gonna have to listen to anyway. So it's kind of like we're getting to them faster thanks to him. So this is Caligula's Horse and the song is called Dragonfly. So for those of you Caligula's Horse fans, I'm sure you know this song, but here we go with Dragonfly. junk definitely living the dream <laughs> the best chords every time. How he went, like not what you expected or what I expected. this part. It's not like an epic chorus, but it's got a very like, uh, duh. That, with that triplet feel. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. Oh, I thought I was going to go back into it.
I like the volume pedal on the guitar tone. I like the, the more I listen to these guys, nice blow there. I think this is the best part of the song right here. say something about that last part. Very interesting.
done. All right, so a couple of things I want to say about this. Ironically, when I talk about longer songs, uh, I don't know how long the song was. It had to be seven plus, but um, I think it's funny that I just use Graves as like their best song and, and it's worth the 15 minutes and all that other stuff. This song was not. <laughs> um, it was good. It was a good song. I think this is a grower song. Like the more I listen to it, the more I will like it, but something about it just didn't connect as much. Um, and I said I wanted to talk about this. What's interesting to me about a couple of things about the way this kind of played out for me is typically with Caligula's horse songs, it uh, the, the payoff and like the buildup is like through the vocals and chords and as it rises. And what was interesting about this is none of that really happened. But where it did happen, the payoff and the buildup and the chords that were great were through the guitar solo. That section there, it was interesting because it was like that was the focal point and that was like the, to me, the best part of the whole song. Which brings me to another thing about this guitarist is that the more I listen to Caligula's Horse, I love that he's got like shredding ability, but he's really, and I've said this in past videos with him, he's really good at picking the right notes and not like he's just trying to go fast. Sometimes he goes fast and he does technical stuff, but he's more, you can tell he's more focused like John Petrucci on like the notes that hit the chords that are going by. And you can hear a lot of times his classical influence like in there, like a classical kind of guitar. Um, I, I like it a lot. I like this guy. I think he's really good. I think he's, probably overlooked as a really good guitarist for some reason, but I think he's really good in his writing ability more so than his technical ability. Obviously his technical ability is good, but I think the focus of his genius is on his, if you listen carefully to his solos, they're really well crafted and constructed. Would you guys agree with that? Or would you not see that or hear that? Or do you not pay attention much to his solos? Because in that solo a lot, uh, you could hear just how well it was crafted and constructed. And when I go back and listen to it again, which again, this might be a grower on me, but it didn't really, it was just kind of like, oh, that's a good song. It's an okay song. But I do feel like this would fit in the category if it maybe it was a little too long for what you got out of it. That's how I'd feel about this song. So um, the other thing too is some of you guys, there are two things I want to address before we move on to the next song. Um, you guys were talking about the difference between Haken and Caligula's horse. I think it's true. They're obviously different, but I think the reason they get plugged together is because um, the singing is very, because someone asked, what is it, the singing? Is it? I think the singing's pretty simu similar because I think Haken does a lot of that. And so does Caligula's horse, obviously. So I think they do a lot of similar kind of vocal arrangements in going up higher in the angelic range. I always called it angelic. So I think there's some similarity there, but I think there's a lot of difference as well where you can tell that they're completely distinct. Um, so yeah, that one. The third thing that I want to talk about before moving on is I saw some people in the chat saying something about the live stream that's coming up here on what, June 20th? Um, and originally when Paravarum told me about it, I was like, hell yeah, it's gonna be sweet. I can't wait, I'm gonna join it. But now I think I'm not going to join it. I'm not, and the reason why is I have never seen these guys live. And because I've never seen them live, I want my first experience of them live. I mean, I have seen a couple of videos, live videos, but they, I think that's different. I want my first experience of them live to be like face to face in person. So I, I don't think it would ruin it, but I also don't want to get like any, I want my whole first experience live with these guys to be just like that energy. So I think I'm gonna skip the live stream as of now. I might change my mind, but I think that's where I'm at right now. So, all right, let's move on to Dan's third song. Um, this third song is by none other than a few fan favorites here, Vola. Here we go with Vola and the song is Future Bird. So I'm excited to hear this one. Here we go. Whoa.
Mm. I like how it's being. I like that. Da, 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 da. It's catchy and and unique. Guys, write a bad song. No. Yes. Damien. All I ever wanted was control. the verse so we got a verse chorus verse Flowers in your hand, a poison from oh the wind, good switch there the see we're not just repeating it's the same thing but different feel damn they're such good at writing dude Vola is the face of Prague these days Face, but they're quickly growing, man. We dream of cellophane, wake up and ball and chain for a day more. Yes. I don't get the future bird part. What does that mean? Like you're flying? Nice section here. Yes, Adrian. But they still keep the verse feel, they just change it in a different way. It's like inversion almost. The building here is great. Is it going to fade out like this? I love this fade out. Wow, dude, that's, dude, what the fuck, man? These guys are just badass, man. They, I think, are quickly rising to the top. I mean, they're, this new album, I don't know if this song specifically is uh, from the new album, but if it is, this new album is just killer. I mean, there's so many good songs, even if it's not from the new album. They got so many not just good songs they're really good songs um man this is they just i don't know how to explain it but they have like such a good um uh, mix of like electronic feel um oh 
My dog definitely likes them too. Hey, shut up. <laughs> um, my dog, my dog, my, uh, the, the feel, the difference of feel between like the electronic stuff, the melodic stuff, the, I just, and, and it's, that song was like short enough that it was just like good. And someone said they didn't like the fade out. Who was it? Oh, Jeff said he didn't like the fade out that much. Um, I like the fade out. It was like a cool difference. It was like, I wasn't expecting it. It kind of made the song feel very, very short. But uh, I think everything about that song was really, really good. Definitely going on a playlist. So yeah, I'm definitely happy about that. So uh, man, we are two for three, which is funny because the third that is just like an eh song is Caligula's Horse, which is rare. <laughs> rarely, rarely happens. Um, all right, we're gonna move on to the next one because we are already at 40 freaking minutes and we're on song four. So uh, this is the band name is Beyond the Bridge. Never heard of this band, Beyond the Bridge. And the song is called Triumph of Irreality, not reality, Irreality. Triumph of Irreality, Beyond the Bridge. All right, here we go. The old man and the uh, spirit. So. I like that. Yes, this is like a Caligula's horse feel. Reminds me of a uh, space divest. No blemish, but infinity confined to my reality. Like an ivory box. Like an ivory box. Yeah, this is turning into like. This is a Colin and Sasha song for sure. Let's see. <laughs> it's, it's so obvious who's gonna like this. Look at Dan looking out for Colin and Sasha. <laughs> yes, Colin, you guys are that predictable. <laughs> but so are we. I mean, we're just the opposite of you. <laughs> yes, okay. Oh, that's cool on the snare. It's like a, like a train. Nice. Ooh. Drums are frickin' rolling in this song for sure. Yes.
like the guitar here. Not like shredding crazy, nice like notes. I like the tone on his guitar. <laughs> yes, it does sound like, whoa, that had to go into another song. Okay, I'm pretty sure that went into a different song or another song, because that was an abrupt stop, kind of, or unless it's like a stop like Pull Me Under, <laughs> which has an intention uh, of it, but. Okay, so what I think is interesting about this, and just reading the comments in the chat, is Dan, I'm going to give you two thumbs up for somehow... Maybe you did this intentionally, I don't know, but you found maybe the perfect middle ground between the sentient beings and the humans. <laughs> to, to give a matrix kind of analogy. That you found like the people who love like power metal and that kind of neoclassical stuff and the people who don't. You found a middle ground where it seems like everyone's like, yeah, we like this without that. And it also brings up a second point that maybe um, what is hard for the people who don't like that style as much as Colin and uh, Sasha do is the vocals. Maybe it's the vocal kind of feel or addition to that kind of music that is more of the turnoff for the rest of the people than for Colin and Sasha. Uh, which brings me to point number two is people, I, I, I think if you unpackage this psychological thing, we're going to get a little counsel here. Uh, if you unpackage the psychological idea of predictability, for some reason predictability has like a negative connotation whenever you say it and it's applied to people. Oh, you're so predictable, you're so predictable like we've been saying in the chat. But if you think about it, predictability is an essential quality of trust. So like, would you want to marry or be with someone, friendship or otherwise, with someone that is constantly unpredictable? No. You, you would rather be with somebody that is predictable most of the time. I think what's happening with this idea of predictability, that's a word, is that you don't want someone that's so predictable that they don't have any color to them, that they don't have any openness to them, which I think by default, this channel is not gonna be in that category because we're trying to open our boundaries as long as you're willing to open possibly listen to other things then I don't think predictability is a bad thing it's who we are and we've said this a couple of times in the last couple of weeks we're gonna have our predictable feel and our different takes on songs and we're gonna fall in different camps I don't think that's bad I think that that's a good thing uh, because predictability as you get to know each other and you connect with other people you want that 
you want that predictableness in your relationships in your life because that's how you manage life and you work through it and people have their giftings right and not everyone has the same gift the fact that people are predictable in their different giftings makes it great as long as you're willing to be open to new stuff which i think this channel is by default that so i want to i'm just i know i've jumped on a soapbox for a second but I think there's this misconception that predictability is a bad thing when I think it's a really, really good thing. But there can be a bad part of it is if you just close yourself off, which I don't think we're doing. So great job, Dan. You brought us all together in one kind of melting pot <laughs> of a song that hits a lot of what we like without having the other parts that maybe separate us. Woohoo! Good job, Dan. So, all right, we are going to move on to the next song, which is another Caligula's Horse song. <laughs> this song is Caligula's Horse's Rust, uh, and Dan specifically wanted these to be separated, uh, so we're going to listen to Rust and see if uh, Caligula's Horse can have another stunner for me, or if it's just going to be an okay song like Dragonfly was. So here we go with Rust. Like the beginning so far. Get building here. Man, it's the most double bass I've heard from this guy. <laughs> Just flipped off the crowd. that rhythm. John. Or Dan. You think this is angry? This sounds like normal Jim. I don't hear angry Jim. Love this chorus. This is a Caligula's Horse Chorus. Okay. Back to that. Good. See, that's a catchy... serious double bass and it's like up in the mix so it's like fuck your prey for rain oh yes Fuck yes! Oh, I just hurt my neck. <laughs> oh my god, I'm gonna go to the gym. Holy shit!
damn. This went from a good song to a great song because of that section right there. Oh, I thought that was gonna keep going. Good, good transition there though. Stop some of this. Breathe. And then get ready to get home. God, I fucking love these guys. Way to end it if this is the end. Ugh. Dude, that rhythm is sick. Uh. Oh, Colin, don't leave, man. Tell work to fuck off. <laughs> Can't leave this shit. Oh, dude, my head hurts. Fucking. Woo! Colin, take care. Sad that you have to work on a Saturday. Saturday work sucks. Weekend work sucks. Actually, all work sucks. Man, that song went from good to great because of that freaking heavy ass part. And I saw a couple people say, just wait. Yeah, definitely. Just wait, man. First, the song was like, yeah, this is good. This has got a good groove. Everything. Da, da, da. Oh, my God. That fucking rips. <laughs> Damn, that song was great. Woo. Man, that was really, really good. So... I definitely like Rust more than I liked uh, Dragonfly. Dragonfly might be a grower. Uh, I could just tell by the way it sounded that it was a little long in my opinion, but we'll see how it grows on me the more I listen to it. But definitely Rust, man, it hit that perfect kind of like length as well as like the perfect, like somebody said, like this is their most radio friendly song, but it wasn't. Like it's radio, but it had those elements that were not just radio. So. Yes, man, that was an all-around great song. Good job. Man, I fucking love Caligula's Horse. I love them so much. All right, so uh, we're going to hit the last song because we're already at 60 minutes on this. Uh, which, ooh, here we go. This is Earthside, and the song is called A Contemplation of the Beautiful Mind. So far, I've really liked what I've heard from Earthside, so I'm hoping this is going to be good too because Earthside really surprised me. Contemplation of the Beautiful Mind. Here we go with Earthside. Let's see how it goes. Got a little Eastern vibe here, Middle, Middle Eastern vibe. faded out and it's just his voice. Man, this 
really reminds me of Moulin Rouge. Nice transition between heavy and passionate. It's abrupt, but it fits somehow. I like that little piano. Back to this. I have to say, I don't mind the screams because it's not like annoying screaming. It fits, and you can also hear someone else singing too. Normal notes. Very like emotional song. Sounds like almost like you're going through mental disorder. building here. It's going to go back into that drop. Yes. He's doing a really good job at the distinction between the two parts. The building really makes it transition well. again nice transition yeah, this is like a roller coaster man for sure I feel like I would be like it's like a heavy heavy song for sure True. 
I really wish I had lyrics for this song. Because I feel like the feeling of the song is heavy, heavy, heavy. Where the lyrics are much more needed in this song than other songs. Excuse me. transition. Yeah, this has got to be the song they play at the end of their shows, for sure. Got a leprous feel to me too. Definitely draining and emotional. Dude, this would be fucking epic live. Transitions in the song are great. Right back to the beginning. Way to just like... <laughs> bell curve it. Maybe if... It, it's got like a uh, Passion of the Christ feel right here. Normally I'd say with like these beginnings and ends, they're kind of unnecessary, especially as how long they are, a good minute and a half on each side. But in this song, I think it fits. I think it's okay to have this because it's so fucking draining and emotional and at the end. <laughs> All right, so yeah, definitely that song, Dan, Epic, epic song. It had a lot of leprous feel uh, of, like, is it Slave? I think it's Slave. The one that we watched live with Einer. Is that how you say his name? Einer, Einer. Um, it had that, like, it had that, like, leprous kind of, like, passion and drive in it. Um, it very draining, yes, is a great way to say it. Like, the ups and downs, like, the emotion of it is epic. Um... Definitely a song I like. I don't know if I'd want to listen to this unless I was just like in a very draining, passionate mood to be kind of like sad. Because it's got like this like just overall like intense, sad kind of feel to it. So 
I don't know if I would put that on. I want to listen to this a couple more times before I decide if I'm going to put this on a regular playlist. I feel like this would be like a playlist that's just called depression or something or like uh, escapism <laughs> just to like escape and go into another world. It's almost like uh, I need some ayahuasca and shit like that while I'm listening to this and maybe I'd never return. But yeah, it's definitely intense. Definitely. I mean, very, very well written. Very, very well written. One of the few songs where, like, even though it was screams, the screams fit well. They weren't, like, overpowering to turn me off. Uh, yeah, just, it definitely was, like, going down a path of, uh, I don't know, just mental illness is what I thought. And I said at the beginning, and uh, Adrian just said, sounds like a song, someone committing suicide. Yeah, it's kind of that feel. It's got that, like, which is why it's draining and why I probably wouldn't want to listen to this all the time, you know, as a regular playlist. Um, but definitely great songs today, Dan. Um, yeah, I mean, that was a great playlist by Dan today. Lots of good songs. Um, and we are going to end at 100 and, or sorry, 100, an hour and 12 minutes. So uh, tomorrow, same time, same place, we have Mr. Thomas Schumann with his playlist tomorrow. And then on Monday night, we're gonna have Adrian's playlist. So we have basically three live sessions of people's playlists. Looking forward to it. Today has been great. Dan, good job. Um, and we will see you guys here next uh, tomorrow at let's see, 11 a.m. and then Monday at 7.30 p.m. So make sure you get those right. All right, we will see you guys tomorrow. Peace.